strange. Is it Phantom? Pentium. Hey Pentium, welcome. Strange. What is strange? The poetry they write on Venus. Okay, you want to read it? There's one about the Earth Moon. Okay. It's very short. All right. It's the cold crystal moon that circles planet three doesn't mean anything to anyone, but yet it shines in our sky sometimes. And other times it is like a hot ball of fire, but we know that only we are in the warmth. It is frozen, it is cold and distant, and we observe it as a jewel in the sky. I didn't realize the Venusians would see our moon. I suppose it would be pretty big. Mm, yes. I thought it was interesting that they would write about a moon around Earth. Yes, it's very unusual and it's interesting, yes. It's much more beautiful in their language. I see. The interpretation is rather flat. However, it does make a point that they consider it a jewel in their sky. Uh -huh. Sun reflects off of it, so yes, they must be able to see it. Otherwise, they couldn't write about it. So you wanted me to give, give you some poetry. Did you hear the song I sent to Jim? Yes, Glide. No, the other one. Which other one? Любви мои, ты боялся зря. Oh, the song you sang. The one you sang? Yeah. About the, the horse in the book? In yes. The, that one? Yeah. Yes, I heard that. Uh-huh. Very nice. Here is another one. It's by Novella Matveeva. Любви моей ты боялся зря, не так я страшно люблю. Мне было довольно видеть тебя, встречать улыбку твою. И если ты уходил в другой или просто был неизвестно где, мне было довольно того, что твой плач. Do you get the words? I can translate if you like. Please. Uh, Raise a glass. It's um, you, uh, you should have been uh, afraid of my love. My love wasn't that uh, fear. Fear uh, wasn't that to be feared. It was sufficient to see you, to meet your smile, and when you went away to another woman uh, I was happy that your coat was on the on the nail hang, hang, was hanging on the nail uh, and then when you went away it was sufficient for me that the nail was in the wall and when the nail was pulled away by someone who painted the wall uh, it was sufficient that there was a hole on the nail and then when the paint covered the hole it was sufficient that the hole was there yesterday. So it, uh, you should have been afraid of my love. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not that scary. Uh, but why? Uh, why? Uh, but what I got from that, you won't understand. I understand what I understand from that. It's a, the way that you 
reduce your sorrow is over time. And that shows elapsed times, but it, it's a long lapse of time. And still, it was sufficient that you remember even the slightest memory of the love. I would interpret it that love inside was much bigger than whatever happened outside. Ah, that's another way to interpret it. Of course, you humans have a lot more emotion. Mm -hmm. I would see it as a time-lapse image that, as over time, things got better, and it was okay that things were removed, because the memory was still there, although not as sharp and as painful as it once was. Mm -hmm. How was that? Mm -hmm. I see it, Ah, another poem, you say? Maybe. Or something. Well, I wasn't really prepared. I didn't know you were coming tonight. I just saw you here. How about a prayer? Or a ah, yes, okay. I can find one of those, always. They're very prevalent from where we are from in the Yil Yil world. Our prayers go up like steam from the ammonia pits and it rises until it meets you in heaven and you hear it and send it down in rain from the galactic mirrors of sky and we know that you hear us but sometimes your voice is silent but we still praise you and we still lift our prayers to you. But now today, there's urgent times. We must hear your voice to know that you are there to keep, to keep us safe. And I run to the hill where the ammonia pits lie, and I watch the steam go up and hope for the return. Would it be to the Creator or someone else? Yes. To Yavi? To the Creator. And Yahi? Yogi? Uh -huh. He is one of our deities. So it was for the return of the Creator? Yes. It was also for answer prayer. Answer of prayer. Uh-huh. You did not like it? Oh, I did. I did. Thank you. I, I liked it a lot. So ammonia doesn't smell bad to you? Mm, why would it? It smells bad to us. It's mixed with many other things. Ammonia was the base compound of which I was speaking. Uh -huh. But, yes, it does not smell that bad. It smells like, uh, it, like a chemical smell, like you would have a chemical smell. We would sense it as a chemical smell, even though it's not quite as harsh. It is a song. That is the Mongo Deity Yoga, the Rose Brichus, or the Cabrera. Okay. Um, Much, your voice is rather pleasant. Thank you. I'm also not prepared. Have you sung for Lakesh? No, I don't think so. He would be very interested in hearing your voice, I'm sure. So, it, that's a little long song to translate, but the, the main meaning in brief is that we are 
living in the north and we are used to snow and we appreciate the spring so much and you guys from the south where is all this summer and all this war you wouldn't appreciate the spring as much hmm. yes it is like the seasons on any world those who experience more seasons appreciate the the warmer or the colder seasons more as they choose. Uh -huh. There are some planets that have many seasons, some more than three or four, uh -huh. or at least they break them down to at least more. I than can three. imagine. Yes, there are some places that have six and seven seasons, and they have two seven seasons because of the number, of course. Ah, I see. I thought it just much more organized, like dry, wet, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Yes. Yes. Basically. Leaves up, leaves down, you know, wet, cold, misty. To use some of your earth words. The month of... March or April, I don't remember which one. In one of the Slav Slavic languages, is translated as the month of the grass. As the month when the grass becomes green. There are month. There's a month of fish on one uh, one planet because the fish all spawn at the same time on the planet because of how the, how the it rotates, and they call it the season of fish. Uh -huh. I find that interesting, but they don't call fish fish, of course, that's your word. But the season of spawning mushkas. Uh -huh. Mushkas? Is it mushkas? Mushkas. Mushkas. The season of spawning mushkas, yes. Can you sing any children's songs? Can I sing? I am not a singer. All right. But I, I know children's songs. Can you translate. Also, if you don't mind, you can speak it in, in your language first. Okay. Um, let me think. It's been a while since I've been a child. And I do not have any children. Oh, why don't you? It's the choosing of my occupation that causes me not to think that children would be a good idea. What's your occupation? That is my occupation, I will tell you one day, perhaps. I but I can tell you a children's song. Thank you. It does not rhyme because it's not in your language. Okay. But it does sort of have interesting uh, lyrical qualities on our planet. I see. Yes they would be able to remember it easier because of the lyrical motions of the song. Yes. Okay, it's about a prism. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, how... Let me find the words, though, to interpret. There's a couple words there that do not interpret well into your language. Okay. Maybe rainbow. Okay. Okay. Very good. Human thesaurus is interesting. What? Human thesaurus is interesting. Human thesaurus? Thesaurus, yes. Oh, I see. Yes. It would be... I want to choose the most correct word, though. Prism is the right word for the title of the song. Okay. The spectrum of the colors runs wide and long see in between the black lines let's bring you again to the color number one and call it what it is in the sign and number two and number three and let them all flow and how they seem when you let them all go actually i can make it rhyme where was I? And the prism becomes the breakdown of light 
and you can see it. I don't know what the next word would be. All around, I guess. Okay. Um, and when you study, you will learn what they mean and how they come to bring the world into order. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. You didn't read it in your language. Would you like to read it in your language? Or oh, you okay. Yes, sure. All right. Puti sararan kararu sendidi yenda kentuk kurkash mara sendidi kuya haba sando poto tokara yend samadawandu tiki raha mushka shandekuta elalambu didi wishoma pak raka endo. Nice, thank you. Is it my turn? Цвет небесный синий цвет Полюбил я с давних лет С детства он мне означал Синеву былых начал И теперь, когда достиг Я небесных сил своих Да ни за что не отдам, да да ни на да да да. Blue color yes. is the color of the sky yes. and is the color of sadness and the color of being a uh, gent of gentle love and the color of uh, the world be the world beyond. I wouldn't exchange it for anything. Ah. Lovely. The cash would love that one. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. <laughs> he would, he would be highly honored by the blue color, and how many meanings it has for you, in good and bad ways. The more meanings it has, the more valuable it is. You understand. So, because if it only had one meaning, it's only of one value. But if it has many meanings, it has many values. That's right. Do you have? Jokes which you could translate and which we could understand. Jokes? Yeah, jokes are, I guess, most condensed, uh, jokes, jokes and parables are most condensed versions of uh, thinking and emotion. It illustrates the culture, you know, in the most condensed way. Well, our jokes are not like yours. Don't expect me to laugh, but if you can give me examples, that would be very interesting. Well, let me see if I can interpret one that would actually might be funny. Uh -huh. Let me see. It's not like we have your kind of humor. Uh -huh. Like I couldn't say anything like a Pleiadian and a yo-yo walk into a saloon. That would not make any sense. <laughs> the beginning doesn't matter. It's the end that matters. Yes, but you might not even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it would take some explanation, unfortunately. Well, yes, because a hawoon and a masuk, you would never know what they are. And I have no explanation other than they're two different kinds of animals. One looking similar to your rhinoceros, and other looking similar to a pig. Perhaps. Uh -huh. Something similar. Uh -huh. But it wouldn't be funny. One moment. The only one I can think of, a bohook, went swimming in a lake of acid, 
and he invited the Mashu to come. The Mashu hesitated, but jumped in and was immediately turned to nothing. And he said, I can see your skeleton now. I see. Is there any hidden meaning or is it everything on the surface? Well, it would be silly because that animal would never jump into it. Unlike. But they can be persuaded to do many different things. And so it is humorous to us that he was persuaded to do something that was far against his nature. Here is our joke. I was I liked it when I was maybe ten, which was pretty young for humans. So I'm sitting drinking the tea and then I hear the ring in the door. I open and there is a small elephant there. And he offers me offered me to wash my windows and said, please come in. And I keep drinking my tea and there is again the ring on the door and again a small elephant. And he offers me to wash my windows. I said, please go wash my windows. And it repeats over and over. And then I ask, is it, why is it so many of you? Is it the big group of you working here? And they said, no, it's not me. It's the window is slippery. Okay. I will have to think about that one. But the window basically, so he falls down all the time and comes back. Ah, oh, I understand. He is the same elephant over and over again. Yes. Oh. Elephants are very large, are they not? Yeah. It was a toy elephant or some like imaginary character. Ah, because a large elephant would not even be able to get on your roof or in any ladders of any nature. That's right. Hmm. Interesting. It could be any character. I don't know why it was an elephant. Okay. That's okay. Jokes are not funny. Um, let's do something else. I would love a parable. A parable. Mm -hmm. hmm. We do not memorize parables, but we can just paraphrase them, <laughs> as your word says. Paraphrase. One moment. parable of the chakras. When teaching lessons to children, they teach them with colored trees. So there is a red tree, an orange tree, a yellow tree, a green tree, a blue tree, a dark blue tree, and a violet tree. And they all have their each has their own meaning and they have each their own fruits and so they are told what that the red tree is the tree that grows closest to the earth or the ground mm -hmm. so that they can understand that they need to be close to the ground when they're young and even when they're old because the fruit of the tree of red is stability so and then they are taught about the orange tree which is the tree of the creator and he is just taller than the red tree and he is the tree that is 
making so many other trees because his tree drops seeds and starts many other plants just like him. And that is teaching them about the creation in the orange chakra. Mm -hmm. And the yellow tree teaches them about the wisdom of planning and their creativity with moving forward. It, it goes on like this. Does that make sense? Please continue. It's very interesting. And because our chakras are the very same colors as yours. Okay. We are very close in nature to your okay. species in some ways. Mm -hmm. And then the green chakra is the heart chakra. And it's the green tree with the green leaves, the healthiest of them all. Uh -huh. the, the healthiest and the most mm -hmm. loved because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we teach the children about how love and green chakra are the same in many ways. And that how the green tree branches out farther than any other tree in the, in the forest because it is a tree that likes to give shade to the animals and love to those that are parched and cool them off from the heat. Mm -hmm. And then the blue tree is a, is a tree that speaks because it is the, the tree of communication and it talks and tells people what it feels and how things should feel and when things are right to be felt and when things are not felt right. And there are many examples of what the blue tree says. And then the dark blue seed tree has the sea of seed of sight and it can see far into the future and into the past and, and right into the present as well. And when it opens its branches, you can come in and find things that are lost within you, emotions and cares and love and understanding and things that are not understood can be understood. And then there's the purple tree which is the father of all trees. The purple tree stands in mad majesty and lifts its arms up and it becomes life itself. And it wraps its roots around all the other trees' roots. And so they know where they are going in the future and how to move up to greet the master of all trees. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Yes, excellent. It's very interesting and gives lots of new perspectives on uh, everything. There is many parts to it, but each part is so extensive I just made it shorter. Thank you. It's very interesting. Uh, my parable, I don't know parables, but I will pick, you know, the story which sounds like a parable a little bit. So there was a flood, the gods sent the flood on earth, and everybody, and he gave people three days to pack and go. So the water was coming and people were riding away in, uh, on a carriage and there was a religious Jew who was praying and and he was so uh, so much saying that he kind of was uh, praying and not paying attention to that and people said go in our carriage we'll take you and he said no I my God will save you save my my God will save me I will be just pray so then there was a, a boat that came, you know, the water was coming, so he was praying on the roof of his uh, house, and the water was coming, and there was a boat, and 
people said, jump in our boat, we'll save you. And he said, no, no, my God will save me. And then there was a helicopter which uh, uh, said, you know, grab the ladder, we'll, we'll save you. And he, he said, no, no, my God will save me. So finally he drowned and he appeared in front of God and God said, and he said to God, why didn't you save me? I was, you know, praying to you and I was hoping that you will save me. And the God said, I sent you the carriage, I sent you the boat, I sent you the helicopter, but you refused to take any of my help. Very clever. Very clever. What is a helicopter? Uh, oh, okay. wait a minute. I do know. All right. Never mind. Yes, very clever. But I cannot stay now. It was fun to have an uh, exchange with you today. Yes, I wasn't planning on coming, so I am now having to leave because there are other elements of this day that have to be managed. It was a pleasure and come again. Thank you, Max. I will indeed. Lakesh is here. Welcome, Lakesh. Tell me the story of the blue. You were telling him a blue story. <laughs> what is it? Каких-то лет своих в жертву остальным цветам голубого не отдам. Он прекрасней всех та начал. Та -да 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 -та -да -да. So the blue color is best of all. Um, it is the color of the sky. Yes. And it is the color of sadness. Yes. It is the color of the world beyond, and I will never exchange it for any other color. Of course not, but my sky is red. <laughs> but that's probably why we're blue, so we don't match the sky. So, but anyway, I do like that, yes. That's very nice. It has many meanings then. That is good. But I knew that already. I just like hearing it. Ah, uh, and you are... How are you, Max? Um, tell me why the life is so strange. I kind of feel dragged down, and I don't know where to go, and the money don't appear so far, and I don't even see in which direction to go. Yes, I know. This is a time that you must meditate. And I know that that sounds very, very hollow and cheap. However, through the meditation, you will find things. And your health is not that great. It's not. Not bad, but, you know, not great. And it will be good to heal yourself. You can do that, you know. You can do self-healing. When you, when you speak out loud, that you want to be healed. Your body hears it. Your higher self hears it. Everything hears it and starts working. If you doubt and you say negative things, then your body hears exactly what you are saying. And you'll become negative and sad. And, but say, out loud say things that are very positive. All right. Because I know that sounds very trite. However, the body, your body, hears and can do many more things than you are even able to imagine. So when you tell your body to do things and it starts listening to you, then things will turn around. 
it will turn around in your life as well. I, I have to use Jim as an example because he is never down for too long. He pulls himself right up and he is praying positive things, saying think positive things to his body and feels much better. Although not everything in his body is healed and not everything in his body is good, but it's much better than it was two years ago. So you, uh, you must understand. And plus his money situations are uh, just today. He, when he told one of his friends about his woes and problems, he was very positive about it. He was saying that he'll make it, he'll pray about it, and God will provide. That person provided $250. Out of the blue, blue is my favorite color. <laughs> oh. But another has already offered to pay more. It's a miracle, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Can you ask myself, uh, my higher self, what is the trouble that you know that hold me right now? Am I not right? Am I on the right track? And uh, why is, was I dragged down today? Let me ask. Thank you. Be observant of what you say. He is saying that you have said some negative things today. Hold on, there's more. You have lots of doubts. says doubts when you feel that you are going to doubt when you feel like there is something not sure not right not good and you feel that within you then bring up grounding from your feet put your roots down bring it up bring the spirit up and that pushes things out but it's not easy to do. You have to do it through meditation and you have to be faithful to it. But you are pretty faithful to meditation. But you are not faithful to pushing things out. You just let them there. Um, I will be able to teach you more later. I was not supposed to come here today. But I heard blue and I had to come. Of course. So Thank I, you for your help. I don't know if it will help you, but I hope it does. I understand that it will, but you must, you must grasp a hold of it before it can help. It's like those people that say, it is hopeless, it is hopeless. And you know what? It is hopeless because they say it is. It is not hopeless, ever. But if you say it's hopeless, and you believe it's hopeless, then it is hopeless. Do you understand? Right. So, <laughs> um, is there anything uh, about my health you can advise? I can give you some energy for your health. And I will do so before I leave. Are you resting well? No. I was full of thought at, at night. I couldn't sleep, so I was thinking and thinking and thinking. I see. I will take care of that as well, if I can. If they allow me to send a remedy, I will do so. Mm 